I'm Sharla with Freezer Meals 101 and I am super excited to be bringing you this special video today about camping freezer meals. If you are planning to go camping this summer or even spend a lot of time outside, whether it's going for picnics or having fires in your backyard and you're looking for ways to easily feed your family, you are going to want to watch this video. We have a lot of fun and great ideas in store for you today. Not only am I going to be showing you how to make some of these freezer meals to bring camping, but I sent Christy on assignment. <laughs> so last weekend when she and her family went camping in their trailer, she actually took videos for you guys to show you how she uses our freezer meals when she's camping. Now, before I walk you through how to make the first recipe today, I am going to pop over to Christy on location from her trailer and she can show you how she's used the freezer meals that we made a bit ago to feed her family on their camping trip. Hi there, it's Christy here checking in on assignment. I am camping. As you can see, I'm in my trailer. Hello and I brought freezer meals because that's the best. I've got ham and cheese sliders. I've got, uh, what is this? Uh, chicken and broccoli and cheese, uh, well, we call it asparagus bake, but I put broccoli in mine because I'm not allergic. And under there is the Spanish rice. What I have here in my stove is the chili glazed chicken and that magnificent thing on the back is boiling water because I'm gonna make craft dinner, as, or what you Americans like to call mac and cheese. So that's what we're going to have. We got in here late to our site. We are camping on Crown land, so that is government land that you don't have to pay. We are dry docked and we are running off propane and we got here at 8 o'clock and we're still hungry and we just got set up so I am quickly making chili glazed chicken like a rock star with craft dinner because I'm an awesome mom. Mm -hmm. And uh, I'll give you some feedback on how it is because it's the first time we've tried it and I was really excited to see it. Okay, I'm gonna do a little ketchup here, mid, mid cook. Um, I have to stir my noodles. I am a craft dinner snob and I don't like the regular, I don't like any craft dinner, but um, I like the shells and it has three cheese and that one I can stomach. You can see I got quite the sear on the first one I wish I did on the rest, but what I did... Oh, it's coming! It's coming! Oh, I gotta start my timer pretty soon here for my pasta. Oh, I added another minute. Oh well, it's gonna be soft. And I have a timer in here that needs a battery change because... Or I left it in here over the winter and it froze, and so my battery is weak. I'm lucky it's running at all. But I do have more batteries. This is looking really good. This is looking... Oh, look at that one down there. Oh my goodness. This looks really good, guys. So the other thing I did, there was quite a bit of liquid left in with my chicken. Not a ton, but there was enough. Like, look at that there. There's my chili. Chili glazed chicken. Look at all that. I'm going to put that in at the end and just cook it all so that it's going to make a nice, beautiful sauce for this chicken. And it's going to be a delish. So while that's cooking, I thought I would just give you a quick tour of my awesome camper that I love. We set up kids' bunk beds in there. that used to be two armchairs, and we just set up the kids' bunk beds. Um, I'm going to skip over my kids, but we'll blur out his face. That's my boy. Hi. And uh, that's our couch. My daughter. And my awesome kitchen beside my stove our little entertainment center we have to set up the tv we tuck it away while we're traveling so it doesn't like die um our games closet all of our boots we got here and it was raining and it's really sandy here so all of our shoes are uh sandy um back here is our bathroom our sink and shower our opposite from the toilet. Our awesome bedroom. It's a queen bed and this is where the magic happens if you asked my husband. So let's head back over to this chili glazed chicken. I like being on assignment from Charlotte. This is pretty fun. 
and it's good food and it was fast and it's pretty healthy. I'll cut up some vegetables or or we'll just pretend that we did because uh, we're tired and I should have cut some up beforehand. I think I'm really, really close to putting that sauce on. Maybe I'll do that now. How do I have left on my timer? Three minutes and 20 some seconds for my cracked dinner to be done. So we're probably pretty close on the chicken now. I'm gonna put the sauce on. I'm glad I put the extra sauce in here. It's cooked off now and kind of reduced down. It looks really delicious. We have some nice browning on some of these pieces. You can tell my pan is hotter in some parts than others. And it looks really, really delicious. The craft dinner is ready and we're gonna dish up. All right, there is the chicken on the plate. Okay, the sweet, the chili glazed chicken is a hit. It's delicious, my family's happy, and uh, we can eat and go to bed. You can probably hear quads in the background, ATVs. That's kind of the area that we're in. That's what we're doing out here. So I'm gonna dive right in here and show you how to make one of these recipes that we're gonna be talking about today. And then we're gonna go over to Christy. Some of the recipes that we're doing today, you can actually cook right over the campfire, while others that we're gonna talk about might be better for the stovetop or the oven or for bringing a crock pot with you. Now, if you're gonna have electricity, whether you're gonna be staying in a trailer or in a tent, if you have access to electricity, then you can bring a crock pot with you camping. And I'm telling you, that is going to change how camping looks because dinners got, get so much easier when you've got your crock pot, you can just throw in a freezer meal. Now this first recipe, I'm gonna be putting links to the recipes in the description box below. That way we don't have to go over every single ingredient. You don't have to try to quickly jot things down as I talk. So this first one is hot beef sandwiches. And I sometimes make them with ham and beef because some of my kids prefer to have ham. So today we're just gonna be making some beef ones just to show you how this looks. But if you wanna make different meats, you wanna use turkey, ham, roast beef, or whatever is your favorite, then what you can do is take a Sharpie and after you wrap them in the foil, you can just write on the foil what it is that's in there and then your kids know which ones to grab and you know which ones to grab. So we've got our hamburger buns just Easy peasy here. We're gonna add slice of roast beef. You can add several slices. I think I'm just gonna do one today. And actually I'm gonna lay them all out because that's gonna make it so much faster. So now that we've got all of our buns laid out, we're just going to go ahead and add meat to each one. Now we're just going to top that with cheese. And then on the other side here, you're going to spread some of this delicious sauce that you made. Again, this, the recipe for that sauce is going to be in the description box. Now these can be cooked up in the oven or they can actually be cooked right on the fire because you are going to be wrapping these in foil so they can be heated up on the grate on your campfire and if you do a backyard fire you can heat those that way too this is a great recipe for youth groups or large numbers of teens getting together because everybody can have their own and it's individually packaged super easy and nice for when you're camping because it's also kind of one of those take and go things so when we go camping i don't know if you noticed my shirt here with the camping things this was a shirt from let's see 2016 so it's been a while but um i've got a few camping shirts like this i've got some more recent ones this was from a trip that my husband's family took camping all together. 
And when we camp all together like that, our kids like to go and visit their cousins at the different campsites and that kind of thing. And so these sandwiches are great for something like that. But I'm going to try to find the photo and pop the photo in here of most of us or all of us that went on that camping trip because my husband's family is huge. He's the youngest of seven, and of course we have seven, and lots of his siblings have large families, and lots of our nieces and nephews have gotten married and started having families of their own. So it is a massive family, and they are actually a lot of fun, really nice family too. They get along, which, you know, isn't the case for all families, but their family really gets along. So every year they have this annual camping trip. It doesn't look like we're going to be going this year because of the COVID restrictions in our area. But one of these years we will be joining them again. And that summer trip is always full of memories for my kids. And it's great that they get to hang out with their cousins in that way. So some of the things that I have made in the past that I've brought with me. Chili, always chili. So I fill a cooler with freezer meals and take it with us. And that's also great. So the meals act as their own kind of ice packs, which is handy too. And so I also take some foil packets. I always bring our salmon, usually the ginger soy salmon. That works really well in a foil packet with asparagus. The barbecue salmon is amazing. So I'll pop some of those salmon links down below, but those cook beautifully over the fire in a foil packet. You can add some um, potatoes if you want, whatever. It's just a really delicious camping meal. What else do I bring? Oh, like the pulled pork or pulled chicken. So the shredded barbecue chicken is amazing or any of our pulled pork recipes. Those taste so good in the crock pot and it's easy because you can just pop it in in the morning, go and do whatever you're gonna do that day camping. So, you know, sit at the beach and read a book or whatever, go for a walk, go for a hike, watch your kids play at the playground. And then when you get back, either at lunch or at the end of the day, you can serve that really easy um, pulled meat meal and you've had to do very little work. One of the things about camping, I'm gonna be honest and say I'm not the biggest camping fan. It's not really my thing. I didn't grow up doing it. It's my husband's thing and he loves it. And like I said, his whole family loves it. But uh, for me, it was a stretch and it took a lot of years for me to start going on the camping trips. And then when I did start going, I found that it was just a lot of work. You know, as the mom, you are in charge of a lot of the, and I know, I mean, not all families are like this, and some families like the dads do the cooking and whatever, but um, my husband sometimes cooks breakfast or that kind of thing, and he's starting to cook a little bit more as far as dinners and things go, but for the majority of our marriage, it's more been me that's done the cooking. So when you're the mom, especially when there's a lot of kids, you, mostly are doing the packing and like the lists for food and all of those things. My husband takes care of the packing for things like the tents and the tarps and the ropes and all the outdoor kind of things. But when it comes to making sure everybody's fed and dressed, <laughs> that packing got left up to me. So I just found it was a lot of work and all these people that rave about camping, I was kind of like, oh, it's not, I don't get it. Like as the mom, you just end up doing more work than you would at home because you don't have the conveniences of say like a dishwasher or, you know, air conditioning. Well, actually we don't have air conditioning. <laughs> we live in Canada. There's not really any reason for air conditioning, but you get what I'm saying. You don't really have those conveniences. And so I just found it a lot of work, but, over the years, when I started to figure out the food, that was kind of when I started to enjoy camping more because it wasn't as much work when I could bring freezer meals with me. And once I figured out what I could eat, 
because my kids, they'll eat hot dogs every meal if you let them. So, you know, that wasn't as big of a thing, but I don't eat hot dogs and I don't eat hamburgers. So it was a little tricky for me. But once I started to figure out what I could bring that I could eat that was easy to make, but that would feel like I was on vacation because it was something good, that's when the appeal of camping started to click a little bit for me. So one of the things I always bring is quesadillas. I will put a link to a video where I do my buffalo chicken quesadillas and you can see how I do those up ahead and freeze them so that they're not cooked yet and you can just easily cook them. Now I have cooked those over the fire and I have also cooked them in a skillet. I haven't done them in the oven, but we usually rent a trailer when we go camping. So there is an oven, but I don't usually use it. Um, and that helped. Uh, we've also done breakfast sandwiches, breakfast quesadillas, taken those. That makes the mornings easier. Um, it really anything that you can make ahead is going to make camping so much easier. So I'm trying to think of what else I have taken camping. We do bring appetizers that you can make ahead. Things like buffalo chicken dip, cheese dip. Again, with the quesadillas can also be used as an appetizer because we usually have an appetizer night where everybody comes to our campsite and brings appetizers on the first night of the camp out. It's a lot of fun, a great way to socialize with people that you maybe haven't seen in the last year because some of our relatives live a little further away. So that's a lot of fun and some of those can be made ahead. So I'm just gonna wrap these up and you can see how easy that all was. beef sandwiches are done and in the freezer and we are going to head back to Christy and she can show us a few more of the meals that they ate last weekend and then I will be back to show you another recipe. Hi it's day two here camping. I have my fancy apron on. Lines up better with my shirt today. Ooh la la. <laughs> uh, tonight we're gonna have Spanish rice. So uh, let me just turn it around and I'll show you. We're gonna have Spanish rice casserole. You can see it says we have to thaw it, which I've done. Bake at 350 in the oven for 20 minutes, top with cheese and then bake for another 10 minutes. Well, here's the thing. I have a really nice oven, but I don't really use it in my camper. I use it mostly for storage and my little tool my little uh oven here i don't really know i think it's there but it got ripped off so i don't know how to set my heat on it and i have to light the pilot light myself which means i have to like lay on the ground with a clicker with a barbecue lighter and it's all a big thing so i'm not going to use my oven today i'm going to attempt to do it in this frying pan where i just fried some bacon because we're going to have caesar salad with it and you can't have caesar salad without a little bit of bacon and I've just realized I don't have any croutons. So do you know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna cut up some pieces of bread and fry them in my bacon grease <laughs> and make my own croutons. It's a really healthy Caesar salad. Oh, I brought Parmesan cheese, so that'll be good. And it'll go nicely with my uh, casserole. We have hung out with some friends here today that we planned on meeting here, so we will eat outside uh, with them. Now, I'm not gonna give you a feedback after I've cooked it, other than I might tell you how it went in the frying pan, like in the skillet instead of in the casserole dish, because we've had this many, many times. It is a crowd favorite. We have done this often because it's easy. And what's especially good about it is it's a full meal. It's got hamburger and rice and uh, that special red sauce that we make that's so good. And it has olives and onions. And then you top it with cheese. Like you really can't go wrong. It's so delicious. We just have it all the time. Okay, I'm back. I have my croutons in my frying pan and I can just hear them starting to sizzle. Instead of having all of that bacon grease in there, it was a little, it was a little much. I mean, there's a time and a place for bacon grease and maybe this is it, but 
I thought it was a little much. So I buttered the bread and cut them into cubes and now I'm just frying them. I've got them on like, I don't know, number six. It's medium-ish, a little medium high. And I'm just gonna watch them. I'm gonna see how they toast. And I have the bacon drippings, some of them still in there, some of them I poured off. But you can see, if you can see down in there, I still have some of the bacon um, pieces that got left behind. You know that has a name? It's called Fond, F-O-N-D. The stuff, the gooey stuff that comes off your meat at the bottom of the pan. But look at that, they're getting toasty. There's a bit of a sizzle. You, oh, you can hear the quads in the background behind me. You could hear a chainsaw a while ago because firewood doesn't cut itself. And uh, we are camping, living the good life. Okay, these are toasting up a little bit. It's really nice. Um, I'm gonna show you my spatula. Oh, it's a piggy, isn't it so cute? Okay, I just got it in there. So in this case, our ground beef is pretty fine. Normally we have it a little bit chunkier than this, but this weird thing happened when we were browning it this time and it got stirred too much and it's okay. It's still ground beef and it'll taste delicious. The nice thing about trying this out in the skillet is that there's always a lot of moisture in the Spanish rice, I find. Um, I always think when I put it into my casserole dish, it's like, ooh, why is this so saucy? but um, it always bakes in nicely. And so I think it's gonna translate to the skillet really, really well. So I'm gonna put the lid back on. The instructions for when it was in the casserole dish in the oven were for 350 for 20 minutes and then you sprinkle the cheese on and you do it for another 10 minutes. So I'm gonna try probably similar here in the skillet, but I'll probably stir it after 10 minutes and again after 20. Then I'll sprinkle the cheese, put it on low, put my lid on and see how it goes. That's cooking. I'm going to show you how my croutons turned out. Like, holy smokes, those look so good. They're perfect. They're, I mean, it's just toast. Ultimately, that's what croutons are. They're just toast. But when you make your own croutons, have you ever had the croutons out of the package and you go to chew them and they break your teeth? Well, these ones just taste like toast. And I made the right call on not seasoning them. They're just fine the way they are with a little bit of that bacon juice that was in the bottom of the pan plus some butter they are perfect the way they are i got my bacon bits there i got my romaine lettuce chopped up and ready to go i've got some caesar salad dressing in the fridge with some parmesan cheese the only thing i'm really missing is the lemon i could do a squirt of lime juice in there but everything in it is cooked i think more than anything it just needs to be heated all the way through I don't have to spend a lot of time like cooking, cooking. How's that coming along? So there is a lot of moisture in it. I'm going to leave the lid off for now and let some of that moisture come out for another, you know, five or six minutes. And then I'm going to turn it really low and put the cheese on and let the cheese melt. Okay, we are back with the Spanish rice. I've put the cheese on. It's finished cooking. I think it's gonna be really, really delicious. I'm gonna give it like five more minutes um, and let that cheese melt and then we're gonna um, have it. And while I'm letting the cheese melt, I'm gonna finish making my Caesar salad. There it is. All the cheese is melted nicely. And uh, look over here. Look at how pretty my salad is. Oh, that looks so good. We're hungry. We had a big day of quadding today and we are ready to eat. Uh, hopefully we can do it outside in the sunshine because that's the point of camping. Hey gang, um, I'm a little worse for wear because we've been out quadding today. Um, I'm not dirty anymore. I did clean up and then we spent some time at the beach because it's a beautiful day out. Uh, I'm going to make the chicken and asparagus rice casserole. I put broccoli in mine. Charla doesn't because she's allergic. Um, I said yesterday I don't like to use my oven in here. There's a couple of reasons why. I'll I'll show you here. Everything that you see here, um, I store in my oven. So my casserole dish, my other casserole dish, my other casserole dish. These are old. These are from a neighbor on the farm that we used to have. And they're, they're good old bar pans, brownie, brownie pans. And then a Pampered Chef bar pan plus a lid for my casserole dish because you'd be surprised at how many potlucks you end up going to when you are out camping. Uh, so I have fired up my oven. I had to lay on the floor and 
do my pilot light and then get it started. So I just have this cutest little oven there and we're gonna get started. Anyway, I'm gonna get it into the casserole pan and then pop it in the oven for half an hour. It's gonna be so easy for after quadding today. So I just kind of dumped out of the bag there. It's nice and thawed. A little bit of moisture in it. I don't even remember what's all in this. All I know is it's going to go in the oven at 350, at least at what I hope is 350, maybe a little bit more, uncovered for half an hour, and that's it. We get to eat it, and it's delicious and healthy and fast, and a great freezer meal uh, to take camping. Hey guys, I just came in. It smells great in here. My timer was just going to go on my, uh, my phone for my casserole, so I'm going to check it right now. I've taken it out and it's still bubbling. The cheese is melty and it is ready to go. I am looking forward to that. One of my kids' favorite, favorite camping meals, something they look forward to every year, is the walking tacos. I know other people sometimes call them tacos in a bag, but regardless of what you call them, they're so good. So all you need to bring with you camping is some plastic forks or you know, if you wanna use your regular forks and wash them after, that's totally fine too. And um, you're gonna need some small bags of chips. So Doritos work well, Fritos work, uh, even just plain potato chips work. So you're just gonna need some bags like this. So we buy giant, <laughs> giant bags full of little bags. We always have our walking tacos pretty quickly after we arrive at camping because I find that otherwise these bags of chips disappear and when I go to make the walking tacos we don't have enough for everyone. So I've learned my lesson over the years and we always have these pretty quickly after we arrive. So you've got your freezer meal of taco meat. I took this out this morning to thaw. My kids are really excited about the fact that we are going to be able to have walking tacos at home and we don't have to be going camping for it, especially because this year we're not sure if we're gonna be able to make it camping. So they're really excited about this. So I'm gonna show you how we assemble these. So you can cook up your taco meat in a skillet when you're camping. So you're just gonna cook up your taco meat. Our taco meat has some cheese in there, but we also like to have some cheese on top too. And then you just put out the fixings. So you've got some lettuce, tomato, green onions, avocado, um, salsa, hot sauce, cheese, whatever it is that your family likes on tacos, put those out and then the kids can open up their bag of chips and dump some taco meat in there and all the toppings that they want on top. So walking tacos is something that we love to have when we're camping. And with your taco meat made ahead of time, it's super easy. We're gonna pop back to Christy to see the last meal she made in their trailer. And I'm actually gonna quickly show you how to make that meal because it is so perfect for camping. And that meal can be heated right on the campfire. Hey guys, Christy here. We are on day three of camping. We're gonna head home today, but first we're gonna have lunch. We are gonna have ham sliders and I'll show you what they look like here in a sec. They're in a tray with some tin foil on. I've put them in the oven already at 350 for a few minutes. Oh my goodness, look at that. It's got a poppy seed, poppy seed butter sauce on it. But I think these look fantastic. They're going to be great. Thanks, guys. Thanks for coming camping with me. I hope you have a really great day. So for the ham and cheese sliders, you're just going to slice a dozen buns, open it, slice them all together in one big fell swoop, open it up. You're going to put on your ham, your cheese, and then you're going to close that up. You're going to mix together a dressing now I will put the link to that below so that you can get the full ingredient list. You're gonna mix that dressing together and you're gonna spread it on top of all of those delicious bunwiches 
and then you're gonna cover that in foil. It's already in a foil container, so it is ready to take with you camping. You just pop that in the freezer until you're ready to go, and then when you're camping, you can reheat it in the oven or right on the campfire. Okay, full disclosure, guys, because this is real life. <laughs> Um, I was going to show you one more recipe today. I had gotten the ingredients to make pita pizza pockets and they're awesome because you can again wrap them in foil and cook them right on the fire or in the oven. So they are a great camping meal. They also are one of those ones where your kids can, they're portable so your kids can take them over to other campsites or, or you can take them over to other campsites. They're awesome. They're from Happy Money Saver. I am gonna pop the recipe in the description box below even though I have none to show you and I cannot walk you through how to make them. They are so simple to make. You just mix together three ingredients in a bowl, your pizza sauce, your pepperoni, and your mozzarella cheese. Well, you can add other things other than pepperoni, but we were gonna do pepperoni and cheese ones today. And then you just slice your pita in half to create that pita pocket. You fill it and like seal the top a little bit, just close it, I guess, not seal it. Wrap it in foil and that's it. That's how easy they are. So I was really excited to show those to you. But I bought the pitas yesterday and I think if you've watched my videos before, you know that we have a large family and they are hungry sometimes. <laughs> We've got a lot of teenagers, so they eat. And uh, I guess one of them got a hold of the, it's probably more than one. They like pitas. They like to dip it in hummus or baba ganoush or to make uh, sandwiches inside the pitas or souvlaki. And so I'm not sure who or how many of them, but somehow I just found the empty bag in the garbage this morning. So I guess I can be thankful that at least they threw the garbage in the garbage. And <laughs> they obviously didn't know that I needed them for a video today. But that is just real life. I'm just being honest and telling you that that's what happened. So we're not gonna be able to make the Pitta Pizza Pockets because I do wanna be able to get this video to you in time for you to make camping meals this summer and take your freezer meals with you, make your life easier. So thank you guys so much for joining me. I really think that if you use some of these ideas, you're gonna find that camping is a lot more enjoyable and less work for you. You'll be able to relax and spend time with your family and friends instead of worrying about the food. So um, if you want to see how we assembled some of those recipes that Christy made in her trailer, I will put the link right here to the video of us making those 150 freezer meals, which is where she got those from. And so thank you again for joining me today. It has just been really great to be able to talk to you guys about what our family does camping. I hope that I've inspired you to make some meals ahead before the next time you go camping. If you've got great ideas for make ahead meals that can be taken camping, be sure to put them in the comments below. If I get a lot of new ideas, I might make a new video on some other camping freezer meals. Thanks again for joining me today and happy cooking.